Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. This is part two of a two-part series that I made about dispatch scenarios. So these are things you might get asked, something like this, make you think for a dispatch oral or maybe airline interview type scenario. So if you haven't seen part one, you might wanna check it out. Otherwise, let's keep going and hit up some new scenarios for part two of this video. All right, for the first one, let's say you're dispatching and you receive a call from a service provider that your company has contracted for medical assistance. Now, these types of companies exist and essentially they will give medical advice to the airline, to the crews, to dispatchers, even to customer service reps. And especially during flight, if a passenger has a medical emergency, what is the best course of action? So you get a call from this company telling you that a passenger on one of your flights is having what seems to be some kind of allergic reaction. And the flight is currently en route and its destination is Miami. The flight just passed Atlanta and you start looking at the FAA Air Traffic Command Center update website and notice traffic delays are beginning down in Miami and there's thunderstorms that are popping up all around Miami. The doctor who you're speaking with in a three-way phone with you, the doctor and the flight crew, is recommending that the airplane just continue to the nearest major airport but expedite the arrival because we don't know what caused the allergic reaction. So what do you do? All right, well, in this scenario, it's important to remember who has operational control, the dispatcher and the pilot in command. The doctor doesn't. The doctor can give advice. The doctor can hopefully coordinate emergency services to meet the flight. And the pilot can speak to ATC and get that expediting. But as a dispatcher, I'm going to look at the weather. I'm going to look at nearby airports, preferably something that is within my airline's op specs. It doesn't sound like this person is in a near-death state or anything. So we can try to find a nearby airport, possibly along our route of flight, and look at diverting there. And then talk with the crew about this, of course, to make sure we have enough fuel for the diversion. Now, if we're just going to land short of our destination, then we should have enough fuel on board for that. But I'm also going to want to check any kind of other delays, make sure that the medical services have been alerted and check on all that, but then get concurrence with the PIC of if we think we need to divert to another airport or if it's best to just continue on to the destination. Now, in this scenario, I said it was Miami, thunderstorms are popping up all around, traffic delays are starting. It might be better to actually stop and land short of Miami so that we can get the airplane on the ground. We don't run the risk of other issues combined with weather at the same time. Okay, scenario number two. All right, so in this scenario, before departure, flight's on the ground, you send the dispatch release, you have planned for holding fuel because the flight is going to San Francisco. You've looked and you've expecting some delays. The captain calls and says, we would like more fuel to be added. And you hang up the phone, you're starting to look at that when load planning calls and says, well, we just added 40 more passengers to your flight because another flight canceled and we need you to take them on your flight. You have the capacity. So you check your new weight and balance with the extra 40 people. Now you are 500 pounds over your maximum ramp weight. And that contingency, that extra fuel the captain asked for as a buffer hasn't been added yet to the airplane. So what do you do? Okay, so in this scenario, I'm gonna be kind of thinking through a couple things. 500 pounds over max ramp weight. That's a problem um, because now we're actually really over the limit of weight. Now the fuel has not been added to the airplane. so. I can look at what's actually going on with San Francisco. I could look at if holding is actually started. However, you know, the captain already called asking for extra fuel. Um, so I'm already kind of planning on that and I do have to consider holding, but I also want to move the passengers. 
However, it seems that I can't move all the passengers if I'm 500 pounds over my maximum ramp weight. So possibly one thing I could do is talk to load control and talk to them about, is it possible to put some of the people, we don't really need very many, on another flight? Or another option from load control, if I have only 500 pounds over the max ramp weight, let's say I have some kind of cargo that I'm taking, maybe we don't bump any passengers, but we just like bump some of that cargo off the flight. That could be another option. A lot of times airlines are carrying around cargo, maybe mail, and may be possible that we remove some of that in effort to move the passengers that we wanna move around. So those are some options. So then let's say that I call the crew back and say, okay, we've got 40 more people. Here's your new dispatch release. Here's your new load sheet. Here's your load manifest. And the captain says, okay, this is not enough fuel for going to San Francisco, especially not that there could be holding. And I don't want problems because I had a problem before in San Francisco and I don't want that happening again. It was not fun. So you could say, okay, captain, thanks for that concern. Okay, I have put some holding fuel in, but the captain says back, you don't have enough. There's just not enough holding fuel in here. And because of the extra passengers, I'm already bumping up against that max weight, so I can't really add any more fuel to the flight. So I guess in this type of scenario, I would again continue having a civilized discussion, talk to the crew, tell them that, well, we had to add the new people, and now we are at our limit. Now, if the captain is adamant we need to bump some people and we need some more fuel, okay. The captain and the dispatcher need to agree before the flight can depart. Okay. I could tell the captain, all right, we really need to move these 40 extra people because we got to get them going. I realize that we want more fuel on arrival in San Francisco. Depending on how long the flight is, I could propose to the captain we make a fuel stop. Not going to be popular. Not a great autumn for efficiency, but maybe we have a fuel stop and we offer that to the captain and say, well, we can stop and get fuel. And that way, if we stop and get fuel, we can get some additional fuel added for your arrival into San Francisco, and we can still depart here with the people and basically try to cover it that way. Now, don't know how that's gonna be received. Possibly that's not gonna be a good plan or the company might not like that plan, but those are the options. But otherwise, really the captain and the dispatcher have to agree. And so there may have to be a compromise and you have to tell load control, I can't take all 40 of these people. We can take some of them. We cannot take all of them, but we need extra fuel because I know that there are going to be arrival delays into San Francisco and the captain wants that extra fuel. Okay, scenario three. During the pre-flight, the crew calls you to tell you that one of the life rafts cannot be used because during the pre-flight they found a issue with that life raft maintenance had to remove it and so it is no longer available and so the flight is planned to go from houston to orlando going straight across the gulf of mexico so what do you do well thinking about regulations in this kind of case we have a problem because we need that life raft if we're going to fly straight across the gulf of mexico I'm actually going to go on a limb and assume we need all the life rafts. Now, if it's an extra life raft, maybe we don't need it. But let's assume we do actually need that life raft. So you replan the flight. I'm going to replan the flight. I'm going to find out how much fuel I need to go around the Gulf of Mexico instead of going straight from Houston to Orlando. So I'm going to replan that flight for sure and evaluate the fuel. Now, at that point, once I've replanned the flight, Unfortunately, let's say I make the discovery that now I am going to be over my maximum takeoff weight. That is a problem. So I've already planned like a long runway as long as possible in Houston. And that is going to, I can't add any more weight. I can't get any more weight for the flight. So what is my solution? Well, once again, let's go back to the previous one I just talked about. We may have to do a fuel stop. Once again, it's not going to make anybody happy, but if we want to move the plane and we want to get the people there, we may have to make an extra fuel stop somewhere along the way to pick up extra fuel so that we can take all the people. Another option would be, depending on how far over we are, the max takeoff weight, we could bump some passengers. 
That would be like a company slash supervisor decision. I, as a dispatcher, I don't get to pick who gets bumped. I don't get to do any of that. Dispatch is kind of cool because I'm in a dark room where I don't actually talk with any customers. I just talk with the crew and I talk with other dispatchers and I talk with the supervisor. But yeah, so you could propose to the company that we remove a few people. Maybe we offer them a bump to take a later flight. That could make them happy. We offer them free upgrades for life. Don't think the company is going to do that. But you could do that. Or we could plan a fuel stop to get extra fuel if we need to take all the people along. Okay. That was a little bit of a shorter scenario. Um, all right, scenario number four. Let's talk about a flight where we're going, perhaps Dallas up to Milwaukee. All right, so your flight's en route, and while you're en route, a bomb threat closes the whole Milwaukee airport. And your flight calls and says, well, uh, guess what? ATC says we are being diverted right now. We're going to be landing short of Milwaukee, and they've said we're going to Midway. So you spring in action, right? What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go into my flight planning software. I am going to take my flight plan and modify it, change the destination, and look at how much fuel is going to be burned. Now, if I'm landing in Midway, that's Chicago, that's south of Milwaukee, so I'm going to land short of my destination. So I don't have a problem that I don't have enough fuel to get where I'm going because I'm landing short. So you're like, okay, cool. So I start running my numbers and I determine that because of midway, um, the performance limitations means that my maximum landing weight is lower than what I would really like it to be. And let's say I run those numbers and I find that, oh my, I'm going to be arriving at midway with actually over my maximum landing weight by like 5,000 pounds. Now, a um, couple scenarios here. Depends on what kind of airplane we're operating. All right. So for this purposes of this scenario, I am real familiar with the Boeing 737-300 because that's what I teach in my dispatch class here where I work at Letourneau University. We cannot dump fuel in the Boeing 737-300. That airplane just does not have fuel dumping capability. So there's only two ways to remove that weight from the aircraft. Dump it. I just told you we can't in the Boeing 737-300, or burn it. So I could burn the fuel, okay. So I run the numbers and I find, like I told you, it's 5,000 pounds extra. So I don't want the crew to get to midway and then be 5,000 pounds over the max landing weight. Now we can't land the airplane, that's a problem. The crew should be looking at this. The crew most likely is looking at this, okay? But as a dispatcher, I'm the one who's backing them up. I want to give them extra information and help them out any way I can, okay? So um, I would just, in this kind of scenario, maybe send an ACARS message. You can ping the flight frequently and find out how much fuel exactly it has on board and then do the numbers and then just, you know, kind of give the crew a heads up. Yeah, it's going to be over max landing weight, but... Uh, maybe what they can do is either request some holding to burn off the fuel. They could fly at a faster airspeed to burn off some, some fuel. They could fly at a lower altitude, request it from ATC, descend early down so we burn off more fuel. That would probably be preferable to holding. Because in this scenario, if a bomb threat has closed an airport, there might be other flights diverting. So I would like to get mine on the ground so that it can get to a gate so that I don't have a problem offloading the people. So I'd like to get the airplane on the ground pretty quickly. So probably having the crew descend to a lower altitude and fly faster. Now they're going to be looking at this as well. But once again, I'm going to back them up, check the numbers and give them any kind of assistance. And of course, provide updated weather for Midway. Also, I need to change the dispatch release to have a new destination of Midway, and we are going to have to make that change and have the crew sign off and I sign off on that as an amendment to my dispatch release. Okay, uh, the last scenario, um, let's do this one. So let's say your flight has been loaded to the max zero wind takeoff weight, and the wind is calm, and you're departing on Reno. Nevada, going up to Boston, when the long runway at Reno suddenly closes because some very unsmart person somehow landed with the landing gear up by accident. So now the long runway at Reno has just closed. Okay. And it's kind of warm because it's the summer. 
This is kind of a performance problem. I'm not going to go into specific 737 numbers. Suffice to say that now we are going to be bumping up against a limiting weight from the runway at Reno. So I reviewed the dispatch manifest. I'm looking at the, the load manifest and I'm like, oh, oh boy. We have five flight attendants when there's only three required for my aircraft because apparently two are in training. We also have a dispatcher riding in the jump seat. The captain calls and says, um, this, you know, incident, I don't like, I don't know if we can still depart with all this extra people on board the plane. So, you know, what do I do? Well, as a dispatcher, once again, like I said, I'm going to review the performance numbers. I'm going to look at the runways available at Reno and what can we actually take off from. Now, it could be that depending on, again, my airplane, the airport combination, I might not be able to take even the normal load of people because Reno has some issues with terrain around there and the runway limit weight can be kind of low. But I am going to want to try to be kind of creative with this and once again say, well, okay, first of all, do we really have to take the flight attendants that are in training? Do we really have to take the dispatcher along who's riding in the jump seat for the observation? Maybe we can eliminate that weight. Maybe there's cargo weight we can eliminate. Maybe there's those kinds of things. The other thing we could possibly do, depending on if our airline allows it, um, is we could plan on a different runway. But once again, I got to be careful with those performance numbers. But clearly, if I'm running up against the maximum weight, I might have to remove some passengers or possibly remove fuel. Although once an airplane is fueled, it's very difficult to remove fuel. Um, so that's not typically the best option there. But Clearly, review the weights, reduce weight as possible so that we can still make the flight. Again, I'm going to go back to this again. Or plan a fuel stop. You know, maybe I didn't put the fuel in the airplane yet. The airplane hasn't been fueled yet. Maybe I can have it go part way to Boston and get more fuel or just get away from the Reno area, get fuel, and then go the rest of the way. I feel like today's theme of all these scenarios is like plan a fuel stop. But here's what I don't want you to do. Don't back yourself in a corner. Leave yourself some outs. Think creatively. Think outside the box when you're getting these kind of scenario-based questions. Don't forget to check out my other videos that you will find in the video description and on the final screen that's going to come up. And have an awesome day from Laura at Aviation 101 with Laura.